Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Well, today is Emma Nutt Day. Yes, that's right, Emma Nutt Day. And before you think about eating nuts, it's actually a lady. <laughs> okay, Emma Nutt um, was someone very famous because she was the first ever telephone operator in history. Do you remember in the old days we used to call the operator to connect us with overseas calls? I'm not sure if you um, if you remember that in in American movies especially because they they used operators more than we did. They they could pick up the telephone and say, "Operator, please connect me to area code two one three." We never did that here. But we did dial 100 to call the operator uh, for assistance with calls, especially overseas calls. They were always very polite, weren't they? Hello, operator services. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Emma Nutt, Emma M. Nutt, was the first ever telephone operator in history. I love telephone operators. Um, if you're as old as I am, you might remember uh, that uh, they had beautiful voices. Um, and they were usually women, weren't they? Very welcoming. Uh, there was a time, though, when it was also young men. But uh, Emma Nutt opened the door for future generations of women. And that's where her story begins. Original phones were actually very difficult to operate. You've probably seen them in the movies. They had little hooks and you sat the earpiece on them. And that's where the expression comes from, leaving the phone off the hook. Um, telephone companies employed young men who weren't really skilled at interacting. They were very good with looking after telephones, but they weren't so good at speaking. And that's why eventually the job went to women to handle switchboards because men, well, it wasn't really their thing, you know. Um, and when you called the operator, uh, the boys could be quite abrasive in their conversations. You know, they were a little bit impatient. They made jokes. Well, you know, we're men. It's what we do. Um, and some of them even... Uh, swore at the clients. Remember that th these are the days before customer service. Okay. And it was Alexander Graham Bell who came up with this idea that young women would be naturally predisposed to being more polite. And so he hired this woman called Emma Nutz. Um, she was already working in the telegraph office anyway. And her first day of work was today, September the 1st, in 1878. And she officially became the world's first telephone operator. Well, I suppose there were boys before her, so we could say the first ever modern female telephone operator. And then her sister became the second because he also employed his sister because he liked both of them. Um, she became something of a legend. And reports say that she could remember every number in the telephone directory. Yeah, but before mobile phones came, many of us could do that. I mean, I still remember my grandmother's telephone number. I remember old landline numbers. But don't ask me to remember a mobile number because <laughs> they're too long. I can't. But when you lived in small places, I mean, the number only had like four digits, you know. In fact, in the UK, and you may have seen this in the movies, we used to answer by giving our, our number, you know. For example, you know, you would, the phone's ringing, you would answer it and you would say something like, Hello, Glasgow 3412. <laughs> because you were just so pleased that somebody was actually calling. Of course, these days, people don't call each other, do they? Anyway, 
They say that she remembered every telephone number. She was also very patient and cultured. She had a very soothing voice. Um, and by the 1880s, most telephone operators in the US were women. I can't say what it was like in the UK, but um, probably it was something very, very similar. Um, yeah, so it became very much a women's place, that, thanks to Emma Nuts. Um, but it wasn't easy. I mean, she worked a 54-hour week for only $10 a month, and she got a lunch break of an hour a day. Um, women in that position had to be unmarried. Yeah, you know, this is a weird thing. We had this in the UK as well. If you were a teacher in a UK school uh, in the 1800s and 1900s, there was an expectation that you wouldn't marry because you should devote your whole life to your career. And even when I was at school in the 70s, there were still a lot of teachers who never married. Um, part of that, I think, came from the Catholic tradition of nuns because, of course, they were the first teachers, weren't they? And they weren't allowed to marry. So that, that was still there. And also this idea that education was very important. Whereas now, of course, it's the opposite. Many teachers are being fired because they're having relationships with the students. Uh, very sad. Anyway, if you wanted to be a telephone operator, uh, you couldn't marry. And you had to be between 17 and 26. Uh, you also had to be a certain height and weight. Um, why height would matter to work in the telephone uh, switchboard? I don't know. Apparently, the companies needed women tall enough to reach the top of switchboards. Were they really so big? Mm. Um, and also, if you were a woman of color, you wouldn't have been employable in that particular job. Uh, there were waves of activism, though, to change all of that. Uh, but uh, there was a lot of protests. And the women in the uh, telephone operating systems, they, they uh, were very pivotal in forcing change and also resisting change. So basically, January the 1st, 1878, the boys uh, were the first ever telephone operators. Emma Nutt came along on this day, September the 1st, in 1878. Um, in 19, uh, 19, women operators were going on strike because they weren't being paid enough, they wanted better working conditions. Um, and in 1922, uh, the New York Times started writing about what life was like for them. And, uh, yeah, it was um, very difficult, very difficult. So they, they were trying to push change. But it says here, uh, discriminatory work practices would trigger waves of activism for equal rights. The women working at the telephone companies were the heart of resistance and social change. So I'm not sure if that means that they were the ones who forced change or if they were the ones who resisted it. I don't know. Um, well, it says here, pick up the phone and thank a customer service operator for what they do. Mm, well, I don't think I'll be doing that. Um, listen to a song, which is all about a telephone. Uh, I can't think of any songs about telephones. Oh, yes, I can. Gloria by um, Laura Branigan. In the translated English version, uh, there's references to the landline while she's having a breakdown. Yes, I think the Italian and Spanish version... <laughs> by Umberto Tozzi, is very different, I think. Uh, I don't think she's having any kind of a breakdown. I think she's having a very nice life in that song. So, Gloria, 
by Laura Brannigan mentions the landline. Um, uh, Stevie Wonder, I just called to say I love you. Yeah, that's another one with uh, a telephone. Um, uh, get into the groove. Was that Madonna? I'm not sure if she mentions the telephone in that song, but uh, it's a nice song anyway. Uh, so, yeah, those are some of the things that you could do today if you wanted to remember Emma Nuts. Um, yeah, you can also tell everyone about Emma with anyone that will listen uh, and maybe publish a post on social media. Apparently, the first ever telephone greeting by Alexander Graham Bell, he suggested using ahoy rather than saying hello. Can you imagine? Ahoy and welcome to another Teacher Joseph podcast. <laughs> well, that wouldn't work, would it? Um, and it says here that uh, before Alexander Graham Bell, Antonio Mucci was the first person to create a prototype called the Teletrofono. Oh, so Alexander Graham Bell wasn't the first. And uh, Alexander Graham Bell's wife, Mabel, she was deaf. And that's what inspired him to create the telephone to make her life easier. Uh, and in 1983, the first phone without wires, the mobile phone, which took 10 hours to charge and worked for only 30 minutes, was invented. So there we are. Some interesting facts about the telephone today. Um, I'd love to know where Emma Nutt is buried. You know, I have this friend, and uh, he's a little bit strange because when he hears of famous people, he often sends flowers to their grave. Isn't that strange? Yeah, that's not why I'm interested in why or where Emma Nutt is buried. I'm just curious. Oh, here she is, yeah. Emma M. Nutt, um, she's buried in Perry in Washington County, Maine. Oh, there she is. Oh, she looks really tough, actually. <laughs> There's a picture of her here. She's a very hard-looking woman, not the kind of person that you'd uh, want to to mess with on the telephone, I think. Oh, I see why they had to be tall. They were standing up all the time. Yeah, oh, very interesting, very interesting, yes. And it's saying here, if you want to send flowers to her grave, they can arrange it. Well, no, thank you. <laughs> I don't really want to do that, but uh, very interesting, yeah. And uh, let me see. Oh, interesting. Oh, very nice. Very nice. So she's in Hartsville Cemetery uh, in Hartsville, Bucks County, Pennsylvania. She was actually born in Perry, Washington County, Maine, and she's buried in Hartsville, Bucks Cemetery. And she died when she was 54. Oh, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. All right, then. That's it from me. So I hope you've enjoyed the stuff about the telephone. And let's talk again soon. See you. Bye.